two, one. Delighted now to be joined by Barry Mullan of uh, DD Sports to look back on round four of the Alliance Hurl and Lee. But before we do that, we just like to offer our condolences to everyone in Ballyhill Shamrocks uh, on the sad passing of Paul Shefflin. Um, it's absolutely heartbreaking what's uh, happened there. Obviously, uh, for Barry, like it is, it is very sad what happened there in Ballyhill. Like they've their parish that have already had a fair amount of uh, tragedy. Yeah, yeah. It was like everybody was shocked. We heard the news. Um, I, I didn't know Paul Sheffin, but I, look, he, he worked here. I'm, I'm from Clanmel here. Paul worked for Clanmel Healthcare. Um, he was a uh, really good hurling man by all accounts. And um, yeah, it's just, just shocking. Absolutely shocking. Uh, same, same age as me. And just out for a run, um, puts a lot of things in perspective. Yeah, it really does. Uh, I suppose when you see some of the results and teams not doing well, it just puts um, everything into perspective. Yeah, but Bally oh, yeah. will rally around that family, you know. So they'll, you know, they'll they'll get real huge support from from Bally Hill and the GA community. They, you know, as it always does. Absolutely, it'd be fantastic to see. Uh, under round four action, uh, there was some great action um, over the weekend. If we uh, look first into a game in 1B on Sunday, it was between your own county, Tipperary, and Waterford. It was a kind of strange game in one way, you could say. It was really competitive at the start of that first half, and then Waterford just really pushed away at the end of the second half. Winning out 128 to 21 points in the end. Yeah, um, you know, really good first half. Um, I was happy with Chip, you know, Mark Yo, Connor Bull, Jake Morris playing well again, Michael Breen, um, lots of good scores. I um you know in the 19th minute, Bennett, Stephen Bennett got a goal and it knocked Tip back a bit. You know, I think I think Watford got one six without reply, I think. Um, but Tip came back. Well, again, you know, and there was nothing at half time. Um, even in the start of the second half, Chip came back and did pretty well. Um, you know, there was uh, right up till maybe about 20 minutes to go, um, Watford just took over. Um, if you remember, Bennett got a, a, a ridiculous over the shoulder point out by, out mm. by the sideline under the, you know, under the stand. And he tip hung in a bit, but the last quarter just they, they blew us away. Um, they were very impressive. Tip were very ragged in that last quarter. Lots of misplaced uh, stick passes, hand passes. They were turned over, uh, and Watford was very sharp, skillful, and they couldn't miss either. You know, they, you know Patrick Curran, Bennett launching balls from inside their own half uh, over the bar. You know, I think they're, I think Watford are, are going places. Big time. Was there a difference of fitness, do you think, towards the end of that game? Uh, obviously, you know, there the definitely was. Now, I, look, we don't know what, what training the tip lads are doing. I don't know what kind of training they're doing. Um, but I will say that, you know, you have to remember Watford are into a third year of, of, of this management um, with, with Liam Cattle and Mikey Beavens, um, you know, Tipper only with Colin Bonner uh, four or five months, you know. So um, I think you have to remember that one because, you know, it, there's a lot of worry here in Tip about about the championship coming up. But, um, you know, we have to remember that it's, it's early it's early days. Tip are using this league um, for experimentation. That's been very obvious from the start from the first game against Leash. Um, you know, I'm just chatting to you off air there. That I, I like what he's doing. Trying up different players, um, trying players out of position, um, but yeah, they're going back to answer your question. Uh, yeah, there definitely is a difference in fitness, definitely. As you mentioned there, uh, with Tip, 
obviously um, they are trying um, new players and it's something they've had to do, I suppose, with the Mares retiring and it's a bit of a headache now for Colin Bonner, say, with James Callanan. Um Looks like he's going to be out for a while anyways. Yeah, they. Uh, it, it was obvious to shame he hadn't done a lot of hurling prior to the Dublin game. I was at that game and oh, now look, he's marking Owen O'Donnell. Is Owen O'Donnell the best fullback uh, in hurling at the moment? I would say possibly, yeah. And shame he didn't get much out of him. Um, so I'm no doubt he would have started the weekend as well. But yeah, it's big. It's a blow. But um, uh, I I think Tip still have plenty of options up there. You know, John McGrath. It's only John McGrath's first start since he he's uh, since he's the lot more um, journey. Um, Noel McGrath will come probably back into the forward line. Um, and you look at Jake Morris, Connor Bow, um, Jason Ford. Uh, Bubble still a bit away. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there hasn't been much talk about it. He was initially left off the panel, and was people are wondering is is, is that is, his tip day is over? But Colin Bonner assured everybody that it was an injury, and that when Bob was his right, he'll be back on the panel. So, um, hopefully, he he'll be back at some stage in the championship because he'd be a a massive player. Yeah, but I, and I'm not too worried about the forward line, to be honest with you. Even you know, it was uh, defense midfield. I think we're we're. Uh, that's where the, the issues at the moment lie. We're joined now as well by uh, former clear keeper uh, Donald Tuohy. Donald, I'll bring you in here just like on this Waterford result over the weekend, the the manner of the way they bet Tipperary, but the players they were without, like you look, Austin Gleeson, Callum Lyons, Jamie Byrne and Desi Hutchinson didn't even feature in this game. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, they seem to have a lot of options at the moment, um, especially around the middle third. They have a lot of legs that they, um, you know, compared to a lot of other teams. So they seem to have a lot of options. Even a couple of the Valley Gunner boys that have come back in, <clears throat> you know, a couple of Mahoney's, even Mikey Mahoney's come in there. Um, I think a lot of them are going to be decent options come championship time. Um, so, yeah, it'll be... It'll be very interesting to see what the makeup of their lineup will be uh, come championship time. Um, yeah, I, I didn't get to see much of it, but yeah, it seemed to be that they were very, um, they were very comfortable um, for the majority of the match. So it's it's hard to judge really. It's hard to judge really because some teams are have a different timeline, um, and you know they're trying to probably peak at the championship time. So some teams seem to be ahead of others. Um, so yeah, no, it'll be it'll be very interesting to see how they go on championship time. Uh, what would... I think it's going to be interesting, lads. What way they use Austin Gleeson now? Because I think Stephen Bennett seemed to be roaming around the place there at the weekend, and he scored one sixteen. He was scoring points from everywhere. Um, so I wonder will they keep him in that role or will they leave him inside? Um, with Desi Hutchinson when when Ozzy comes back, as as no doubt he will. Uh, I'm just thinking ahead to the, the Tip and Waterford game in Welsh Park, and I think it's in six weeks. Is it Easter Sunday? I think they're playing. Yeah, um, the same day is quite long. I wonder what 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 will they do? You know, because as I said, Desi will definitely come into that full forward line. Um, I thought Bennett would have been there as well, full forward line. But the way he played yesterday, uh, he he was excellent, uh, kind of playing that role that Ozzy Gleeson was doing. Um, I think it'd be. I don't know what you think. Is there a new role? Has he a new role in mind, or was that just a, a once-off? Because Ozzy wasn't playing. Do you think Gleason could go in as a permanent forward? Or... Yeah, I think they have a lot of options. Really, um, <clears throat> um, they they seem to interchange it quite a lot. I think um, in matches as well, so they don't seem to tend to stick in one position either. Um, I think Bennett could play centre forward if he needed to, and Ozzy could go in full. But vice versa, they might just start off with maybe Bennett and Hutchinson in the full board line and have Ozzy out centre board. I think you especially Mikey, you Mikey Kiley as well there. Yeah. He's playing very well. He had a great season with UL. Yeah. And he carried out he was he was impressive against Tip, kind of laying off ball and, and working hard. You no, know, very impressive. Yeah. And scoring. He, he's he, he's a serious bit of stuff as well. So she takes yeah. so many options, don't they? 
yeah, and especially if they seem to they seem to be looking at Jack Fagan wing back. Mm. So it looks like they're they're trying to target fairly strong half back line. <clears throat> um, he was he like he was going forward all all the way, you know, all the way up last for the last couple of years. So it seems to be changed totally now that they they're looking at having at wing back. Maybe it's just for league, but it looks like a permanent move. So they'd be. They'd be definitely looking at Aussie then in the half order if that's the case. I would, I would yeah. think. Yeah, and um, Barry, they're kind of getting the rubber to green this year. You could say with Waterford because they've been so unlucky with injuries in the past. And you look at like their full strength anyway so far, haven't picked up any major injuries. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they're. Um, I think they're. If 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 anyone's going to take down Limerick, I think it's Waterford. Um, like if Jamie Barron's come back there, like he's one of the best midfielders around. Like there's a lot of players that are playing in different positions or over over the league that you might okay, I wouldn't have had him there, part of Walsh and Kenny. Um, you know, Ben is roaming around for for Waterford. Um, you see, um even I thought did John Conlon back a centre back for Clare. You know, they're, they're tip played a lot of lads out of position. Um, you know, tip played Owen Connolly at cornerback against Dublin for his first uh, league start. Um, so there's, there's, there's an awful lot of experimentation going, up, going on. Um, but I think Waterford probably looked the most settled. And, I, 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 you know, I don't want to say that they're favourites for our Ireland. I think Limerick. Still are, but uh, I think if I was putting money on anyone for a bit of value, I'd put it on Waterford. Just the way the, the, the carriage revolved for them. Yeah, no, I think they definitely are everyone's uh, second favourites at this stage. Donna, Barry mentions their settled teams, and maybe seeing a lot of the teams now that aren't, say, have, can't get to the league semi finals. Is there a bit of a danger with that not having a settled team with, I suppose, the championship? a lot more condensed this year, like five or six weeks is going to be the opening round. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Um, I suppose it depends on the teams we're talking about, but I suppose uh, there's been a lot of experimentation really with the vast majority of teams. Um, if you're to look at any particular teams, um, if you look like the Waterford, maybe Wexford, Cork, to an extent, they're probably putting out the most settled teams and they've probably had the most consistent results out of, you know, out of, you know, Dublin, I suppose, as well. Um, you know, those three or four teams have been putting out, <clears throat> you know, more or less, you know, majority of their championship teams. Um, but then the other teams, you know, the likes of the tips and then they're probably experimenting a good bit and they're trying to probably find a balance of experiment experiment in their panel and getting game time into you know get into their main guys as well so yeah no it'll be it'll, it will yeah it's very interesting it'll um it's hard to know it's hard to know which which is better you know um you know even you see likes to go with they're probably trying to blood a good few younger guys as well mm. but you couldn't really name their 15 if you're to name it now um based on what they've been putting out and you could say you could say that for a lot of teams. Um, so, yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 a, it's a tough one to so tough one to call. Um, you know, well, what's the right way? You know, what's the right way to approach? Um, but I think ultimately it's probably about probably having your panel of players um, that you you know you can pick 20, 26 guys that are championship. You know, you know that are ready for championship. So. I think um, it'll take me. It might it might take a game or two for teams to actually you know their their proper um, you know the, the the preferred lineup. There's obviously a break now this weekend, and then we'll have the final round, and after that to be the semi final. Cork and Wexford are into the semi finals. It's still open enough in Division One B. Do you think maybe for the teams that haven't reached the league semi final? Barry, that this is going to be their last competitive game before a championship, that teams are going to try and go as close to their best 15 as possible? Um, possibly. Um, I don't know if you saw the 
the, the league Sunday, the Liam Sheedy was talking about what's the best way to go about it, you know, in terms of getting to the league final. Because if you get to the league final, I think you have two weeks to the championship. Whereas, you know, take again, say Tip, Kenny, who, who may not get to the league semi-finals, depending on the results, doesn't look like Tip will get there. Um, you know, they'll have five week, four or five weeks to prepare for the, their first game. Whereas if Waterford win a league final, they'll have two weeks to, to prepare for, for the Tip game. Um, if you win a league final, everybody knows how you're going to play and how you're going to set up. You know, if, if the way you set up in a league final and semi-final, are you going to change it dramatically in, in two weeks before a championship? I, I don't know. Um, like in past championships, probably getting to a league final and winning it was definitely a really good thing. But the way it's set up now, the championship starting so early, um, it remains to be seen. It's, it's uh, I'm not so sure. Um, I know in 2019 when Tip won, they were beaten by Dublin in a quarter final in Turles. But they had plenty of time to prepare for that first game against Cork down in Parky Creeve. And Tip won it well, great performance, and went on and had a great championship. So uh, I, I'm, I'm hanging on to that. I think that, that the, the league is over early for Tip and we'd, we'd be ready for championship. But um, it's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. I think if you use it for experimentation and then months training, then we'd be saying, oh, that was the way to go about it. You know, we, we, we'll see, we'll see um, at the end of the month of championship whether, whether it was the right thing or not, won't we? Donal, you would have um, experienced the round robin. Like, what is this break like now when the league finishes to the round robin? Is it is there a mixture there of intense training and challenge matches? Yeah, I suppose um, it might be a bit different. Um, might be a bit different this year because I suppose the um, the calendar is. Um, the calendar is quite short in terms of the timeline between the league and championship now. I think back in back in 2018 and 19, um, I think you had a longer break in between. Championship probably wasn't until May, um, the first round. Um, so now it's a month earlier. Uh, so I don't think you know. I don't think you can go into intense training and. Organize that many challenge matches if you've only maybe two, you know, two three weeks at max. You're probably just going to be doing a lot of in-house matches and probably just tearing your training and doing a lot of match kind of scenario stuff. Now it's probably different if you're if you're out, you know, but you might have four weeks max maximum. So there might be a, a challenge match organized, but like there isn't much time really. I think it's probably just getting all your bodies back for training and. You know, getting everybody, um, you know, fully, you know, fully rehabbed and fully, um, you know, fully ready for training. Um, so yeah, I think I, th I think it's a much different, um, it's a much different scenario to, than it was a couple of years ago because the, uh, you know, the the overall championship is going to be finished in July. So um, whilst a couple of years ago it was, you know, August, end of August, start of September. So I think I don't think there's much, much intense training. You know, there's not much. There's not much of a timeline for that to actually happen. Um, well, it probably was the case a couple of years ago. And the round robin system, like, how tough is that on a panel? Like, especially because there is teams that are going to probably pick up injuries along the way with the schedule of this. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely going to be a challenge. Um. It's definitely going to be a challenge. I think. Um, you definitely will see it maybe by the third or fourth round that the panel will be, you know, they will have to be used. Um, you you are going to pick in, up injuries, no matter how how much you plan for, you know, your first, you know, every probably every management team and every you know every other team, every team will probably have an idea of what twenty players they want to use. But then, you know, circumstances will. You know, it'll affect it, and you're going to have to, you know, you know, you're going to have to go in deep into your panel. So, um, yeah, as we said, you know, likes of Waterford and then Cork, um, they have strong panels, like you know, so the, it's definitely going to be the teams that have the stronger panels by the third and fourth round. 
you probably might see it uh, being, you know, being back to it. Moving on to one of the other games, Barry, in uh, 1B, Kilkenny 223, Dublin 16 points. We were all expecting this to be um, a titanic battle, especially when you consider it wasn't Paranoid Park, but this was just a real Kilkenny performance. Like, they didn't give Dublin any time on the ball here whatsoever. Oh, I'd say Cody looked at the tip of Dublin game and he saw how, how Dublin played. You know, Dublin were very good. They used the ball brilliantly. Crossfield balls uh, into Roland Hayes and Aidan Mellet all night caused him wicked problems. And Kilkenny just said, this isn't going to happen. And it, and it didn't. You know, they, they blocked up the space and didn't let Dublin hurl at all. Um, you know, they shut down their their um, their strong players. Um, I don't that Roland Hayes did okay, to be honest with you. But the likes of Sutcliffe, Donald Burke, um, you know, didn't didn't aid Mellet, didn't get a whole lot of ball, um, quality ball because they just they, they weren't able to. The Kilkenny set up really well, and as usual, Kilkenny, you know, the goals goes one took it away from Dublin, and it was, it, it was it left them too much to do. I I do think though that this is a once off for Dublin. Um, I'm just looking through their team, you know, they've got. Uh, the class keeper in Alan Nolan, uh, good young players like um, Andrew Dunphy there, got uh, Paddy Smith, um, Connor Burke. The more I see a Connor Burke, the more impressed I am with him. The class player, um, Danny Sutcliffe, Donald Burke, Liam Rush has to come back, Dara Gray has to come back, uh, Reen McBride had a great game against Chip Ronan Hayes. I think Dublin will be all right. I think they will get out of Leinster. I don't know who's. Who, at whose expense, I don't know, but I think that was a one-off. Um, uh, I'd be hopeful anyway for Dublin, but I think it was just a one-off poor performance. Do they need to look, um, Barry, at their half-forward line? Because it just felt at stages like they were nearly dropping too deep at that stage, going into the middle third. Like, especially, it's an unbelievable half-forward line to have of Burke, McBride and Sutcliffe, but they, there just seems yeah. to be not a lot of support there for Mellon and Hayes. Yeah, when you say that, Paul, maybe maybe they need to put Crummy into that half hour line again. I prefer to see Crummy at wing back. I think he's a brilliant wing back. But if they're having issues there, maybe they need to move um, McBride to midfield and put Crummy in the half hour line. Maybe um, uh, I, I just think they they it was just a bad day at the office for for Dublin. It's it's very unlike them in Parnell Park, particularly. To, to have such a weak performance, particularly after a really good performance the week before, um, where they, they really dominated Tip, to be honest. I think the scoreline was a bit flatter than Tip, to be honest. Um, but, but I do think there's issues at, at goalie, not not the quality of keepers, but don't you know more about this than me. But and Anthony Daly mentioned as well, he'd prefer to have a second keeper. It doesn't keep changing their keepers, and it, it does have an effect on the team. Um, I think I think Noli is still one of the best keepers around. Um, I think they should be sticking with um, with 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 the, with the one keeper for um, for the majority of the league. But I don't know. Does that have a big effect on it? Or you're the expert here. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, just on the match in general, I just thought that Dublin were just mentally not didn't look tuned in really. Um, See a couple of couple of balls that usually would go to hand, and a couple of pickups. I think you know Danny Sutcliffe had a there was an opportunity. A couple of you know there's one scenario where he had a couple of times to pick up pick up a ball, like you know, and you know usually you know that's that's bread and butter team, like you know. So I don't think they were just mentally tuned in. It looked like they were quite tired as well. It looked like they were quite leggy. Um, so yeah. you just don't know. You just don't. You actually don't know what they're doing in between. And um, they'd already got what three wins on the, on the board already, have they? Um, one draw. Or, two, one sorry, draw, one draw. Yeah. yeah, two wins. So two wins. Yeah, they're nearly. You know, I suppose. They, yeah, you wouldn't know what they were targeting uh, or what they were doing before that. Yeah. Um, Do you think that was a consequence of uh, Shane Dowling put up a, a graphic there on on Sunday night? And they show a lot of them had started all four league matches, so that that could have been a factor yeah, as well. Definitely, so that, 
Yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. You'd you'd wonder why they're not aren't just picking into their panel a bit more. Um, I know they've a couple of injuries with a couple of guys, um, like Liam Rush and Daryl Gray, and them haven't featured that much yet. Um, Arno Callahan, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be gone though. I don't. I think. Yeah, uh, I think that ship has sailed a long time ago. I think. Uh, yeah. I think Desi Farrell or Matty Kenny actually. Yeah, he he. Uh, I think he uh, he confirmed it anyway. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, so he was Pitty. he was bullying, <laughs> but uh, I know. Yeah, uh, the curries though they they didn't seem to feature the two curries, isn't it? The two brothers, um, yeah, Con- Colin team, and yeah. Sean. Yeah, they didn't feature yeah. um, in that game, or I think they featured no. in the earlier league games, and they seem to be very good prospects inside, especially inside forward. So hmm. you'd hope that they would come championship. Uh, you know, they'd feature championship wise and. Yeah, just in the goalie position, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a hard one. You're mad. They're they're two very good keepers, uh, Nolan and um, Brennan. You know, Brennan's probably uh, he's in the same club as Matty Kenny, so I suppose the, yeah. he would have got a lot of the Welsh Cup games by the looks of it. And they probably would just wanted to give him a game or two in the league to see, um, you know, would they, you know, would you know, is he is he going to get, you know, the chance <coughs> to play, you know, game time or not? Like you know, um. So I don't think there's any fear from that point of view. You know, I'd imagine, I'd imagine, you know, if Alan, Alan Nolan would probably get the last game maybe. And then if they got to a semi-final or final, he'd probably get, more, you know, a couple of games more. So he's experienced enough, I think, Alan, Alan Nolan. Like, yeah. You know, I don't think they're too worried from that point of view. I think they were just trying to give Sean Brennan every chance really to... Possibly, yeah. To, you know, try and, um, you know, give, you know, to show you know, what he can do as well. Yeah, just on yeah, the one. Just on Kilkenny, um, the most noticeable um, positional switch you could say is Pork Walsh to eleven. He's played a lot of it, hurling there for Tullerone. He scores four points against uh, Dublin Barry. Yeah. This could be something that could definitely work because if you look at the other forwards there to come back in of TJ Reid. Owen Cody, Adrian Mullen, even Walter Walsh could be there now scoring 1 3 over the weekend. Mm. Mossy Keown's moving well. Like if Pork Walsh comes in at 11, then you have three other forwards that Pork Walsh can take the attention away from. And he has that long range shooting as well. Yeah, I wonder is it an indication maybe of is TJ Reid going to be playing more out the field as a link player? You know, maybe, maybe that's the thinking there. Um, like he's, having a, he's having a great league. Um, I'd be moving him back to half back in anyway. I think Kenny had plenty of good forwards there. You know, you've John Donnelly there as well, he's a quality player. You've got, uh, that's a TJ, Adrian Mullen to come back, uh, Cody. I think Kenny were okay. And Walter Walsh, as you said, was having a great league as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I think he'd be back, um, wing back. For the championship, to be honest, but I think it's, it's an interesting one, yeah, very much so. Would you keep him up there, Donald, or would you move him back? Yeah, sure, he's he's equally good wing back or center forward, really. You know, um, he's so such a great Paul, like you know, and just very good hurling brain. The fact that he can just transition up there that seems and having a you know that immediate impact, like kind of just says it all, really. Um, I don't know. Like I suppose, if you're looking at last year, uh, or if you're looking at the club championship, you know, Kenny would have said Paddy Deegan would have been tried up there. Um, if if there was anybody, he would have been tried up centre forward or full forward. But um, they seem to be very happy with him, uh, centre back, kind of, you know, sitting in the pocket. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I persist with it. Um, they seem to want maybe to have um, maybe more, um, you know. Younger athletic guys uh, around the midfield at back line of that's and that's probably um, that's probably an indication of your man Blanchfield, uh, David Blanchfield, yeah, Blanchfield um, yeah. wing back yeah. <clears throat> might be something they they got caught in last year when they go to Cork Park um, teams to have real athletic um, you know half forwards midfield that they they might want to match that and I think. Um, Carey, wing back, and Blanchfield, the other wing back, are definitely athletic types that would be able to um, 
you know match that with other teams. So I think that's uh, that's probably what they're maybe looking at as well. David Blanchfield seems to be really the biggest find um, of the league, Barry, for Brian Cody. Like, uh, three points and like done a relatively uh, great job on Danny Sutcliffe over the weekend. Yeah, and Keane Kenny as well. I'm really impressed with this fella too. So, yeah, Kilkenny, geez, they're, they're, looking, they're looking good again. Um, championship will, t- will tell all. But yeah, no, they seem to have found a few really good defenders there. Um, in, in Blanchfield Hugh Lawler has been really well too um, and then as I said Kenny I think is a, is a, is a big, big find for him as well um, yeah Kenny are, are, will be they'll have, they'll have a big say as they always do Just moving on to the uh, other game in that division it was ultimately a relegation semi-final between uh, Leash and Antrim Uh Leach winning out in the end, one twenty. The answer was one nineteen. It's safe to say, Donald, when you're not expecting Leach to get a result, they usually do. Like last year, they defeated Antrim in the, I suppose the relegation playoff for the Joe McDonough, and like fourteen men again backs against the walls. They pull off another result. Yeah, um, it's yeah, it's a fit. It's a fair, um, yeah, it's a fair statement and it's a fair, you know, credit to them that they were able to do that on the back of, you know, I suppose a couple of heavy losses um, previously. Probably wasn't an indication really of, you know, how, um, you know, the quality in their team. Um, they're always actually very hard to beat in, um, in Port Leach. They, they, they always seem to rise it in that, um, in, in their own ground, so kind of wouldn't have been surprised from that point of view, uh, especially at home. And given that the um you know, given the indicate you know, the the couple of matches before that, you know, the, the heavy you know, the, the couple of heavy defeats that they were just going to, you know, rise for one performance. So that seemed to be the case there, definitely. Fourteen men as well, uh Jack Kelly uh dismissed on the 24th minute here you would have thought straight away Barry that Antrim are really going to take control in this game but as Donald mentioned they're hard to beat in Port Leash but they're just really really I suppose sticky and just hung in here yeah yeah Um, I didn't see this game at all now Um, just just heard, heard the results Um. You know, yeah, look, Leash have Leash are a good hurling team. Um, as Donald said, they've had some really bad losses. Um, they, they started off well against Tip, they had a good competitive performance, and then after that went downhill a bit. But I'd say they were they were looking at this game from after the Tip game that they were probably looking at this game that this is the one we want to win. Um, so yeah, fair play to them. And Antrim would be very disappointed. They've had a like Darren Gleeson has spoken about every week about they're not here for moral victories. You know, they're, they're, they want to win games and they'd be so close. Like they could have drawn with Waterford the week before um, if they had scored that penalty. Uh, I, I just think Antrim would be, be gutted now over lo- losing that one big time. But well, well done to Leash. Fair play to him. Yeah. Yeah, um, Donald, just on Antrim, like they were. The story of the league last year and they've been competitive in every game it just feels like when you're expecting them to win these games um, they just ultimately haven't produced the results Yeah um, Yeah they've, they've been they've been unbelievably consistent really um, considering the teams they've had to play in the last two years you know they've they've uh, consistently uh you know, competed with every team, you know, they haven't been hammered really by any team either. Um, you know, they got two results last year against Clare and Wexford and this year they were very unlucky not to even uh, to get a to get results in Nolan Park as well as um as well yeah. as the whole match against Waterford. So I think it's just a case of they they there's they probably just have their select maybe eighteen or nineteen players. Um you know, and they are, they're obviously quite reliant on those 
those players um, that they have. And, you know, the, this is what, the fourth, fourth round of the league. So, like, you know, they've they've had to play three already very, very tough games and have been very competitive in those three games. So I think it just took its toll on, on them, really, by the end of the, you know, in the second half. Yeah, look, they probably, you know, with a man up, they probably would have fancied themselves, really. Uh, but I think, I think they'll, you know, they'll be fine when, um, come championship time. Um, they've got really good preparation. And um, I think, yeah, I think it was definitely a case of um, a couple, you know, the three games that they had were very, very, um, very competitive from their point of view. So, um, yeah, if they got the results, you, you know, you wouldn't have begrudged them at all, uh, considering the performance they've been putting in so far. And don't just on Chad Wire's point here, I don't know, you see, to win the game, like it's it's an outstanding point uh, for Leash to get the victory here. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see, I didn't see it. Um, but I seen um I, th- I think one of the subs came on um Scully was it um yeah he got a sideline and a free um straight away when he came on like so that was they actually have a good they actually have a good panel um and they've a very good they very good stickman they always have so um um you know they they will um they'll be fine come championship time as well I I imagine they'll definitely get a bit of confidence from that that win yeah no, I should definitely spare Lee Sean uh. Moving on to 1A, uh, Saturday evening there, we had the meeting of Galway and Cork in Porky Cueve. Um, it was a huge result, a huge game for both sides. Cork winning out here, 126 to Galway's 23 points. And you'd have to, I suppose the big question coming into this one, Barry, was could Cork back it up? And like, they looked relatively comfortable enough in this game. They did, yeah. Yeah, Cork looked fairly comfortable. Um, look, they'll be happy with... Daryl O'Leary was really impressive for Cork. They'll be delighted with him com- coming through now. Um, Patrick Horgan looks really sharp. Um, I, think, I don't think did Hoggy start the first two games. I think he was, he was available for them. Um, but, uh, you know, his goal was just uh, top-notch. I'm a huge fan. I think he's the best forward in the country. Him and Tony Kelly are the best forwards in the country, I think. Um, yeah, Cork would be delighted. It's hard to judge Galway on this after after the Paul Sheffield's passing and you know, Henry being the manager. You know, that must have affected Galway. Um, so while I would, I think Galway would be too worried about their performance to be honest. Um, but yeah, no, Cork are Cork are going really well. Yeah, they're they're back it up week after week. They'll be a threat. Yeah, Patrick Corrigan's celebration after the goal is. Probably uh, attract it's it's interested people a bit. Like it's like he was nearly trying to prove a point to people. But when you look at his score and stats, and even his hunger for a league game in March, like it's I don't think he really needs to prove anything. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what he's right. What what, what 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 that was about. He doesn't have to prove anything. I don't know who I don't know who was directed at. I, I don't know. It could have been it could have been a, a an in house thing as well. It could have been a a team thing as well, you know. There could have been a bit of slag going on or something. I don't know, but Hoggy is Hoggy is class. He doesn't have to prove anything. Just one thing though, from a court perspective, Donald, the Mayor Coleman role. He, he sits back. Jeremy Millerick goes into that kind of sixth role then, and it did give Ronan Glennon a bit of space for Galway, and he scored five points. That might be one bit of a concern that. Cork will take from this performance. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, um, definitely, it's an interesting one how they're going to try and balance that. Um, obviously, yeah, they'll try and get him on the ball as much as possible, and then kind of sitting back. Um, but yeah, sure, I think it was between Tom Monaghan and Glennon, they must have got what nine or ten points was it? Um, between two of them, so that was what a win forward and a midfielder. So. They do seem to probably let teams, um, they or they're very conscious of not conceding space, um, in front of a full back line now, and probably happy for the teams to be. If the you know if the shot is on, they they can shoot you know shoot from distance, but mm. they're definitely not they're definitely not um, allowing teams now to um, have that 
you know, massive space that um, was apparent in some games before. So um, it'll be very interesting, yeah. And they obviously are trying to um, get the likes of Jeremy Miller and your man Joyce, um, so Kieran Joyce, I think they're trying to yeah, get those two guys um, used to maybe covering that uh, centre-forward position or area. Um, so they, they seem to have... Um, they seem to have it well um, tuned in at the moment. So, um, but yeah. Gareth has given his, his, his flying as well for them. He, he's a big plus for them. But do you think Corker playing going forward, like I think of the championship, or you look at the long range abilities of, say, Waterford at the weekend, are Cork playing a dangerous game the way they set up on puckouts? They're allowing, they're conceding puckouts, but they're dropping back very far, even past the 45 on puckouts. Are they playing a dangerous game? Do you think, uh, come championship, that if that's their, if that's their, uh, if they concede that to say to Clare, you know, will, will Tony Kelly and his and the likes of him not punish them with long range scoring? Yeah, no, it's it's definitely it's definitely the <clears throat> I say it's the most interesting um, tactic that has come out of the league. A lot of teams now are seen to concede the the puck out to the full back line. And it's um, it's a case then of you know can they get it through the middle third to get a you know a scoring opportunity then um, yeah I yeah I, I don't know yeah it seems to be working from now uh, but then look mm. their you know their first round game is going to get is is going to be against Limerick yeah and no no better team to have a sussed out um, they'll have that practiced um, and they'll they'll you know. If there's a team to figure it out, I think they will figure it out, and it'll, we'll have an idea if it's if it's uh, if it's something that's going to work out. Um, I think in provincial ground, it or you know, compare if you if you're comparing um, the likes of Parky Keeve and Co Park, um, I think it's probably not going to work in those um, play you know those grounds because it's there's such a there's uh, I think it's a lot easier to you know, um, you know, get ball to hand, and there's a lot more space. I think. Uh, well, if you're comparing to the likes of Walsh Park, probably a Cusa Park, even. Um, they're they're tighter venue. I think it's tighter. You know, it, it might work in those um grounds because it's just, it feels like a tighter venue. And mm. um, yeah, you know, well, uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be, it'll be very interesting to see. Um, like I, I haven't seen. I haven't seen. Like I know lots of teams are conceding puck outs, but I haven't seen a team afforded so much space on their puck as Galway were afforded. I mean, Tip conceded a lot of puck outs to Dublin the week before, and Dublin made hay because of their deliveries into the forward line. And the, to be honest, the poor Tip, the, the poor defensive setup the Tip had, you know, whereas this was like retreating past the 45, and the cornerback, whoever received the ball, had loads of time to look up uh, and give another pass. You know, they did concede 23 points as well. Yeah. To a Galway team, so... Yeah, and I think Galway had... Did Galway have maybe something like 17 or 18 whites? Yeah. They did, uh, did an awful lot of whites. Um, I remember... I remember um, I remember in 2019, I think, um, I think Waterford played Limerick in the league final in Quebec, and I think Waterford did something similar. They tried to do something similar but Limerick's stick passing was so good. Um, yeah. And that. Limerick yeah. were just getting everything to hand. And uh, they were just, they created, I think they created a lot more numbers out in the middle third, Limerick did. Uh, just yeah. didn't work. I don't think, like Waterford, once Limerick got the lead, they were just able to keep Waterford at arm's length. So I just don't know, come championship time, you know, especially with the intensity of, of it. And, uh, you know, with the you know teams will be a lot sharper uh, championship point time as well. I don't know will that work, but it, it's definitely something that's going to be. Um, it's definitely a tactic that's going to be used by um, a good few teams by looks for. Just as well for Cork, uh, very like we're talking about six wanting to sit back and play that extra role, which the majority of teams are doing now. But Shane Barrett at eleven is definitely one. That's interesting because Cork really seem to be going after 
opposition sixes, and especially with a player who has the, the like the pace of Barrett, can really stretch that half back line. Um. Yeah. So. Um. So what's sorry, Paul? What's the question? Just Shane Barrett, like he playing eleven, and with his pace, yeah. he really seems to be kind of stretching out the half back line. You could see Galway were kind of really struggling there when Barrett kind of went deep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a real kind of plus for Cork that the, the pace that they have with the the likes of the likes of Barrett. Um, the likes of Robbie O'Flynn, you know, strong fellas with real pace. Um, but I, I, I still go back to the. I just think they are playing a dangerous game if they're conceding so much spaces on on, on puck outs. And I think again, I'll ju- we'll judge Cork uh, in the championship, um, and we'll see then how how influential the likes of Barrett and Robbie O'Flynn are going to be uh, when teams, as Donald said, are more. Are, are much sharper. Um, I still think this game is hard with the judge, considering what happened in the Galway camp. So, um, look, Cork would be happy they've, they've won all their matches, and they've got players in form. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Cork set up uh, in the championship. And Barry, where go after you? Where are they? Uh, I think they're Galway are in a good place. They've they've tried out players as well. Um, you know, you have to remember a lot of their players would have had a lot of hurling done. You know, NUIG and GMIT got to the ladder, got fairly far. Well, NUIG got to the final at the Skim Cup, and I think GMIT got to the semi final with loads of Galway players. You know, so I'd say they, you know, there was a lot of hurling done. You know, physically that can't be be easy on 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 the team. So uh, I think come summer they'll they'll be fine. Um. I don't know, Evan Island, will, will he be on the freeze? Conor Cooney took over there recently and looks really good. Um, I think Galway, are, Galway are, will be in a good place. Um, I think they, they're sure, they, they definitely get a, a good kick from getting, you know, getting Henry in there and Henry Shefflin in there, um, you know, command and respect straight away and, and all that. But, um, yeah, I think, I think Galway will be, be happy enough the way, the way things Things are going forward. Particularly up front as well, Donald, they still have a few players to welcome back. Um, in particular, the one probably that's the biggest loss is Brian Cannon, especially when himself and Whelan are in there. They, they do attract a lot of attention from the opposition's full back line. Yeah, yeah, um, he's a big loss. Um, he got injured in the Fitzgibbon. Um, during um during the year, so yeah, he's a big loss. Uh, yeah, it'll be yeah come championship time. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the makeup of their forward line will be. Um, look, they're obviously without Joe and uh, Brian Cannon and Jason Flynn got injured, I think, as well during the year. Um, so that's three big guys to be missing already. Um, but imagine you know they still have a lot of talent to be bringing in. Um. You know, and yeah, it like Connor Cooney seems to be, you know, really playing well for them. Um so um yeah, they have a they have a lot of options, I think, up front. Um I, I think it'll be 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 interesting to see what their makeup will be from from two to maybe nine, you know. That um I'd say that's still, still something that they're trying to work on. Um because they have a lot of options up front. Um from you know, the really experienced guys to come back in as well. So um yeah, you know, it'll be, be interesting to see how they well, Loche as well. Is he, is he under twenty this year? Is he going to play with them? Or is he because if he he's plays... he's uh not under twenty anymore. That, okay, yeah. He's, he's, an, uh, he's another he's another quality player now that will that'll strengthen their forward line as well. Very good. Yeah, very good. And there's a Fleming yeah. chap as well, I think, that plays Fitz, Fitzgibbon. Um, John Fleming, yeah. Yeah, he seems to be a really good uh, guy as well, a good option. So, um, yeah, I think it's just a spine of their team, really, to see where 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 they're, um, who do, who's going to be in the, you know, the pivotal positions, really. Um, for a goal, I think that's Joe Key, Keatsman. And they had, they had Conor Whelan, full forward, 
but he seemed to be on his own a good bit. Um, you know, so you know, like Brian McCann would have uh, would have attracted a lot of attention as well. Um, down through the years, so I think they probably you know they'll be seeing who they want to you know feature with Conor Reid in for Gordon. I think as well. Yeah, Kevin Lee over the weekend is still in leaving search as well. He scored two points over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, just before we get into the two other game, lads, uh, I'm interested you know, at this stage to hear everyone's thoughts on it over the weekends that go by. But the hand pass is still being frequently um, pulled across the board. What are you making of referees going after the hand pass, Barry? Um, I think it's a good thing. I know there's, it's kind of 50-50 with, you know, any debates you'll hear, some are far. You know, Shane Dowling, again, the other night was saying that, you know, referees can't be guessing. You know, if you can't see it, you can't blow it. Was it was, it was kind of his mantra. But I think if you're, even if you if you get a few wrong in terms of saying it's a throw when it's not, um, I think it's a good thing because players and coaches will eventually just cop on and go, okay, we've got to, do this better. We we'll, we have to show a clear strike in action. I think it's short term pain for long term gain. I think anyway because it is a bit of a blight on the game. Um, but I will say that it must be impossible for referees as well or hard on them. You know, watching the the Tib Watford game, I was convinced that Mikey Kai threw to Stephen Bennett watching it first, but it was a clear hand pass. You know, and it was slowed down, and referees don't have slow motion to to, to change their mind. You know, but no, I think. I think they should persist with it and um because eventually players will, will start doing it the right way or consider more consistently and I think the the, the long term uh, benefits will outweigh the short term pain in my opinion. What have you made of it, Donald? Yeah, it's hard to watch it actually, isn't it? Um because I suppose if you're pulling up so many hand passes, it's just slowing down the game a little bit. But I think yeah, there is merit to it. Um, I think if they start pulling it now um, consistently and then, um, you know, for the league, you know, hopefully the message will be, you know, driven into teams and that, you know, you, you know, it's going to be pulled. So you just wonder, is it, are they going to go to that extreme then in championship time? You know, it's fine, you know, pulling the league games, you know, where to... You know, there's not much ex- at stake really in you know, but a champ- in championship time, if they start pulling it and they start getting it wrong, um, and it ends up being a, uh, you know, it ends up being a difference between a team losing and when then I think that's where it's going to cause an issue. Um, you know, so they, I don't, I don't know, like, do are they if if they're going to keep pulling it like that, and they get the one or two wrong, you know, I think it just needs to be accepted then. That um, it's you know there's a there's a reason why they're doing it. I can definitely see them like, abandoning this and just going back to where it was for summer. You know they seem to be clamping down on steps a lot as well. But come the summer, that be guaranteed that will be forgotten about. And I, know, I just hope for the hand in terms of the hand pass that they they persist with this. Uh, and like I said, short term, uh, long term gain is the key here. And if I just hope the directive to the referees is persist with it because you know it will be better for the betterment of the game. You know, it's very hard though, it's very hard for a ref to pull it back. It's yeah, so it's, hard, it's impossible. Yeah. You know, they've enough to be worried about, um, yeah, in one way. Um, and you kind of have to see the human side of it as well. Like, if they do get one or two wrong over championship time and it does end up being a difference, you know, do you know, the yeah. The abuse that they'll get, you know what I mean? Like the the, the lashback that will be there, like that will be, you know, they, they have to worry about the penalty rule as well. You know, you know. So there's yeah. so much, there's so much happening, there's so much happening. Yeah. So you'd hope that, um, you know, you'd hope that they get the majority of them right when it's, you know, when it, when it, if they're doing it at all in championship time. Um, but I, would, I just wouldn't like to see it being, you know, the main difference between teams winning and losing. That would yeah. be my own fear. But, yeah, that's going to happen, I suppose. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see will they um, stick with that for championship or not. Donald, your um, own county Clare over the weekend uh, based Limerick uh, finishing 18 points apiece, both sides finishing with um, 
14 men. Uh, it was a real battle between both of these sides in Ennis. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there was, um, yeah, it was definitely a, a very hard, it was a very hard fought uh, match between the two, like the two, um, between Karen Limerick. Um, it seemed to be very tight. It seemed to be very tight. Um, you know, there wasn't much space given, um, given to either forward line, really. Um, so I think both teams were just, you know, conscious of not, um, you know, not conceding too much space to the opposition forward line and they were just trying to condense, condense it as much as possible. But, um, yeah, look, I think I think both teams will be happy enough coming out of it um, um, considering, um, you know, how, how, how it played out. Was Clary dis- disappointed that uh, David Fitzgerald's goal wasn't given for a square ball because he did look out- outside the square in fairness? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably should have been given, but I suppose. Um, yeah, um, yeah. You see, sometimes they they're not given, and look, you wonder on those ones could you know could we take a you know take a minute or two you know to consult with a you know not a video ref but like even somebody in the lines on the you know in the in um, the third match official like to just check it up properly and you know because I suppose you know you wouldn't like that happening in a championship match either um, but um, yeah look I suppose you get some you get some of those um, incidents happening right um, but yeah look I think they'll both be happy enough both both teams will be happy enough really going, coming out of it um, Limerick probably definitely were their intensity levels were, were definitely um Increased, uh, increased a bit more, um, but I think there's probably still not a championship fitness yet. Um, they still seem to be probably getting. They're probably improving every week and week, but I don't think they're at maybe the fitness that other, that other teams are at. So um, I think they'll be happy enough as well coming out of it. The right cards here were a bit of a, a talking point. Uh-huh. A couple of people were saying that the glam one was harsh, and people were saying that Jack Brown was sh- shouldn't have been sent off. What did you make of them? I thought the uh, I, I don't know how you can say Galan was harsh. To be honest, you know, I mean, he was being fouled. It was possibly a penalty, but and he kind of shrugged him off. But he went back for a second swipe as well. I mean, it was. It was yeah. Definitely a red card, no doubt about it. Um, and then who was sent? Who Jack was sent off? Jack Brown was sent off the player. I mean, it was it was a foul on Key Lynch. It was nothing else. But I think he was sent off for it was a persistent foul, and you know, the, the, like that yeah. that foul itself wasn't. Uh, you know, in I see that in isolation, it was just a free in. That's it. But I think it was persistent foul and why he was sent off. So. Um, I don't. Is that harsh? I think. Did did the referee say it was three fouls? Is that persistent fouling? You know, I don't know. Don't know actually. Yeah, don't know. Um, he obviously had a yellow. So whether yeah. whether he got a yellow and maybe two fouls after that. I think um, that's a bit harsh, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're if if you're sent off for persistent fouling and you're doing it five or six times, fair enough. But yeah, I th- I thought it was very harsh, to be honest. Um, yeah. And it was definitely a goal as well. I mean, yeah, you know. I mean, when the ball was passed, he was a long way outside the square. And when the ball entered the square, he was still outside it. No, it was, yeah, it was, it was a poor call. But the, that, the ref wasn't helped there. The ref only went in to check. Yeah. I mean, the umpires are standing right there. They should have, they should have seen that. Barry, uh, you still have to say discipline is now a huge worry for Limerick, like in the overall context. Like, I know Galan's was two yellows, but as you said there, he still did go back for a strike. And if he wasn't on a yellow, it could have even been a red straight away. It could have been, yeah. Yeah. So, like, if you look at through the, through the league, like, discipline has just been costing Limerick a lot. Yep, big time. Um, and there's, there's not even a debate about the red cards. Um, Garot Hegarty's one was definitely red. So was Seamus Flanagan's. Um, so, yeah, it is a problem. It's going to have to be addressed. 
because when you come to the championship, if you're if you're pay, playing the last, if it's a close enough game and you're playing the last quarter, a man down, you know, it's, it's not going to end well, no matter how good you are. Like they are a class team, but you know, the, you need to have 15 on the pitch. You know, and especially the way the game has gone now. Um, you, you know, you need all your players. Um, so it'll have to be addressed. It is a problem. You know. Yeah, and they actually haven't had many centre mass in terms of I don't think that you know, down to the years and um, when they've won, you know what I mean? So they've they really, you know, they've they haven't uh, experienced that at championship. I suppose in the last couple of league campaigns they have they have had a couple of sending off. So um yeah, it, I don't think there's much, you know, there's not much argument really with the sending offs. Um it's kind of just loose hurt like Hegarty's one and Galan's one was, you know, kind of loose loose enough really um, just kind of use it early you know and it kind of swinging it across somebody's neck or you know head height you know against the helmet like you know what there's not much yeah. you can expect from that really like you know Kingston's one and Flanagan's one there a week ago that was that was kind of a late you know it was a shoulder you know it was a tenth of a shoulder um, but it you know, it was the collision was against the head. You know, so I suppose that's they're they're different. But I suppose you know when you're you know the use of the hurley and it's swinging against your neck or the opposition's neck or their their head, like you know, you know that's that's you know it's needless in one way. Like, but I suppose I think a, a lot of that will be filtered out uh, come championship time. I don't think they have had many sending us. So uh. yeah, but I I do think they probably got away with a few. Oh yeah. Possibly red last summer and the championship before, and I think had had those incidents happened, if they ha happened this summer, they'll get the reds. You know, they didn't get them before, um, but you know they 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 will get them in the summer. They are they are their their car is marked, pardon the pun, um, in the summer, so they they'll have to they'll have to address it definitely, you know. Just on their um, full forward line at the minute, Peter Casey and Barry Murphy don't look like they're going to be back for the Munster Championship this year, both with serious injuries. James Flanagan obviously sent off uh, the last day. And he probably will come back in Flanagan and he'll have Galan, but are they struggling nearly to find that extra the other corner forward really, don't know, because... You look at that half forward line of Hegarty, Lynch, and Marcy, and Carl O'Neill's obviously playing very well at the moment, but there is question marks whether he would be better out in the half forward line. Yeah, um, I suppose, yeah, it's it's kind of it's, it's had an impact, right? Um, based on this league campaign, um, definitely like you can't replace like Peter Casey, you know, with somebody, um. With a, you know an upcoming player like it's not like for like so um I, I don't know I don't know I think I think they're um I think teams are setting up against them uh, more defensively and I think that's where it's I think that's where they're um uh, more than individuals being missing I think that's where it's where teams are um where they're not scoring enough um teams are happy to have their half back line sitting so it's, they're not conceding that space to the full forward line. And then, you know, um, if they're crowding out the middle, you know, they're, they're not getting as, uh, as many scoring opportunities either. So, you know, I think if they, you know, come championship time, I think if their shooting is a bit better out, out the field, um, you know, they've had a lot of wides in the first half of matches in the league. So I think if that's brushed up a bit, Teams then will find it hard to sit then, um, and the, that might leave them more space. So, um, but it's definitely they've definitely you know their scoring average has been a lot lower. But I think it's because teams are sitting a good bit more, and maybe maybe their fitness as well isn't as it where it could be at the moment. So I think that might a couple of factors like that um, might be impacting them at the moment. But um, yeah, it'll be it'll be it'll be very interesting to see who they actually play. In corner forward, is it English or O'Neill? 
is Graham Mackay going to come in slot in there for championship? So, um, you know, are they going to? Be, they might even change their half forward line. They might even bring Kyle Lays up. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they do that either. Um, so that might um, that might give them another um, you know another dimension as well. They're going to have to do something different. I think anyway. I think I think I agree with you, Joel. I think they'll they bring Kyle Hayes up. Um, if you look at it, the last couple of years, you know, the the ball their forwards are getting was was brilliant crossfield ball. They space in front of them, and Flanagan and Gillan just made hay. Um, and then Morrissey and um, Gerald Hegarty were getting the ball in acres of space, just drifting into space and striking on the run from you know from 16, 65 and forty five meters out. They're not getting that space anymore. Um, because teams are setting up um, more defensively, as Clare did. Um, but I, I still think Limerick are, are the team to beat because if they start out the discipline issues and Paul Kinnerk will will see this, and John Kiley, obviously, and they will have scenarios where they, they will create those scenarios of training and match scenarios where they'll work on this and how to get out, how to solve this these problems and I wouldn't be surprised if they hand it over to the players as well that look look what can we do here? I want you to come up with solutions to 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 counteract this. You know Limerick will be fine. I think it'll be I think Limerick will be they, they, I guarantee Limerick will be not Ireland's will be fine. There was an interesting stat on um Anthony Daly's Hurling podcast there on Monday that um T J Ryan gave it was Limerick were the lowest scorers across Division 1 at the moment, which is uh, something we definitely didn't expect this year. Yeah, it goes back to what Donald was saying there about you know, their, their fitness levels wouldn't be up to scratch yet because you know they've come back probably the latest of everybody. Um, and the, probably the, the work on the training ground hasn't ha- obviously hasn't been done yet, but it, it will be done and they will solve the... The problems with the, the defensive setups, but as I said, true, true match scenarios of training and, and and working these things out and video analysis and and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so the uh, the the score and averages, they're just probably not uh, having practice enough to come up against this kind of defensive setup, but they will, and yeah, they they're still the team to beat. Donald, uh, on your own county, Clare. Um... It's been a bit of a disruptive league for them, a lot of injuries. Um, they seem to be getting very close back to their suppose, strongest 15. There's a couple of long-term injuries there with Aidan McCarthy and Mark Rogers. Still Shane O'Donnell and Ian Galvin to come back. But um, where do you feel Clare at now, heading for the conclusion of the league? Yeah, um, yeah they seem to be... Um Seem to be building their squad, um, you know, closer to the, you know, as championship is coming closer. Um, obviously, it's hard to judge in the initial round of the league because I suppose they're missing so many guys. Um, and something, you know, I think similarly last year they they probably started this league slowly, but they they kind of eventually got their form. Um, Going close, you know, by the end of the league. So it looks to be something similar that they're trying to. They have definitely. They're getting all their bodies back um, at the right time. And um, yeah, no. Based on Sundays, you'd have to say that they're they're definitely. Um, you know, they're definitely improving, improving week and week now. And um, you know, uh, we'll just be yeah. It'd be interesting to see what how they approach the goal and match now. Um. In two weeks' time, where they they put out a strong, you know, their full, you know, the full deck um, against Galway and try and target a win there, um, or they will they experiment again. But they'll probably try and put out, the, you know, as close as team best team as possible. So, um, so yeah, it, again, it's just getting guys back, getting guys back. You know, they've like the David Reedy is still to come back in and uh, Aaron Jenner. Was injured the weekend. Dean McRoy was injured, um, so it's just getting guy all those guys back uh, by championship time, really. Um, but um, no, they definitely, have, even the younger guys have really showed up well as well. So 
they're um no they're looking they're looking good um they're looking good based on Sunday anyway. Total is Mark is Mark Rogers out for is it long term? I actually you know? don't know. I have no idea. You were asking the wrong guy. You know, I have no no uh, information on him at all. Um, it seemed to me initially that they were saying that. Um, um, I think he might have got a scan last week. Um, so I don't think it's initially as bad as I think. Uh, but yeah. I, I look. I actually yeah. don't know what that means. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to be as long term as they think, but uh, I don't know what that means. You know, is he going to be back by championship or not? Um, you'd hope yeah. he'd play some champ, you know, minutes in the championship or not. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd have a big interest in Clare now. My, my, a lot of my family come from Clare. Well, my parents are, are, are Clare people, Clare hurling people. Um, the, will Colin Galvin's retirement have a big effect on Clare? Because I think, I th- you know, you look at like, Paul Maher's retirement will have a massive impact on Tip, um, and I I think I think personally Galvin's retirement will have an equal uh, effect on Clare. Yeah, um, I should look Colm's huge huge loss regardless. Um, super hurler and super brain to go with it. So like a really clever clever operator. Mm. Um, um, you know if he was fully. You know, if he was fully fit, he'd be nailed on midfield. Um, but I think he had a lot of injuries. Um, yeah, going back to last um, last year or two. So, um, um, so I, I don't know was he going to be a starter either, um, based on you know his injuries. Um, uh, but I don't know. It, it, uh, they seem to be you know if I'm looking at the midfield, they seem to be moving, uh, trying trying guys in there. Um, but um. I don't know what their starting midfield will be, you know, come championship time. They they seem to have given a lot of guys there a chance. So um Zoom um, Cotton Malone so, will be there. Yeah, yeah, look yeah, probably, yeah. If um because Cole played I think he played the first half wing forward over the weekend okay. and then he moved midfield. Um and he's played midfield uh, in championship last year, I think. Um so he's definitely like, he's a perfect, you know, really good option to have. Um, but if you're if you're moving in midfield, he is a lost then in the half forward line. So I suppose um, it's an area, right? Look, if you had a fully fit column Gallagher in midfield, you'd be talking about a really you know different prospect then um, because of what he can offer. Um, yeah, but I think yeah, as you yeah, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Look, um, but he, he will be a loss for sure. Yeah. Um, and then, sorry, I'm taking over, Paul. Oh, you again? Just want to ask asking the question. <laughs> just, just, just one more. I just want to get a clear like, perspective. Like, is um, like, what's the story? The John Conlon thing is—is is he centre back or is he going to go back to the forwards again? Like, he's a brilliant full forward. Yeah. Um, very hard to tell. Yeah, very hard to tell. Well, obviously, you no. Know, but last Sunday, he's going to be centre back. Um, yeah. Um, they had him. Um, he missed the first game, I think, and he came back for the Wexford game and played full forward or playing the forwards against Wexford. So, um, uh, yeah, I'd say he'll be centre back. I'd say he'll be centre back based on last Sunday. He was very solid and he's very experienced as well. Um, mm, yeah, he brings a lot of an awful, uh, massive experience. Um, you know, massive leadership um, as well in the back line. So, I think that's. That could be a benefit to them, um, you know, considering if there's guys injured um, at the moment. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Like he's lost in the forwards, even considering how good he was going against Wexford. Like he was very good against Wexford as well, considering it was his first match back. And um, I suppose bringing Tony back in probably, you know, lessened the impact. You know, um, at least you could bring back Tony in the forwards. You know, and bring John yeah. back. You know, I think they didn't um, miss that as much, but um, maybe Shane O'Donnell inter- is closer. Yeah, back. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what uh, Shane's story is, um, but um, it will be interesting to see what, how they line up in their full forward line. Shane Means flying it um, really good. Yeah, really good guy, um, good prospect. But um, yeah, be interesting to see how they get on and you know how they line up. In the forward ring as well, um, but yeah, looks like John is centre back. Um, 
yeah, they're always going to find a spot for him. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just on the uh, other game, um, the final game, 1A, we're just going to briefly uh, look at it. Obviously, it wasn't live on television, but Wexford uh, got over the line in the end against Offaly. Um, obviously, didn't have their uh, strongest team out, but one massive positive here for Wexford Barry is uh, Lee Chin um, obviously wasn't back to last day, but Conor McDonald's form, or Rory O'Connor's form Rory O'Connor. during this league is the probably biggest positive Darry uh, can take so far. Yeah, what a hurler. Um, I've, see, I've, I've seen a good bit of him playing Freshers and Fitzgibbon for DCU over the few, over, when I was up in Dublin. Um, absolutely brilliant player. Um, he's yeah, he's a real positive. Um, Conor McDonald as well. I know Wexford are Darry can do great stuff with them. Um, they'll be judged on championship though, not league. Um, I suppose I don't know have they sorted out their free taking issues. Is is Lee Chin taking the freeze? Or I mean, I didn't I didn't see any of the I didn't see highlights. Well, Connor the, uh, took them at the weekend. And what were his stats like? Nine freeze. Nine from nine, or was it? Um, I didn't see much of this now, yeah. either, but it just says nine threes here. Yeah, all the reports. Yeah, they really need to nail down a free taker. Yeah, they have struggled in other games, even when they've been yeah. with the free taking. Um, yeah, are you surprised with the start, Darry Egan's better? No, not 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 really. Um, like he's he's really highly thought of in tip. Um, since he, you know, he's been involved in coaching management with, with Kiladangan, of course. He was in with Liam Sheedy. Um, no, I'm not surprised at all. No. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him, how, how they get on over the summer. And he's got some good people with him there. I mean, he bought in Gord Darcy, Billy Walsh mm-hmm. as well, just to be in the background. But Niall Corcoran is with him, and I know Niall Corcoran a long time. And um, he, it's, he, he's a brilliant, brilliant coach. He, he only add to the... To, to to that back on team. So no, not not surprised at all. Yeah, that was a seven point win for uh Wexford uh, in the end, one twenty two to Offley's uh two twelve. So that means Cork and Wexford are in the semi finals and then in the other division, Waterford, Tipperary, Kilkenny and Dublin uh all slid in the hunt so that'll go down to the final day. Uh but that is all on our show today, looking back at the action uh, over the weekend. Uh, Barry and Donald, thanks for your time.